All right, great. Uh, well, I will call to order the Board of Directors meeting of Community Television of Santa Cruz County for February 27th, 2023 at uh, 5.32. And will our interim acting secretary call the roll? That's you, Keith. You're <laughs> muted, Keith. <laughs> we don't know if he's really there. He's yeah, muted yeah. and his camera's <laughs> off. Um, I can, um, are, uh, he is muted here. I can unmute him in case he's- There he is. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get ready. I was trying to put together the stuff to type. So I was a little a little behind oh. the curve tonight. All right. Um, well, uh, ready so let's see, for roll let's call, call the order. Um, Guy Lanier. I am here, thank you. Maitreya Maziars. Here. Me. <laughs> Joe Hall. Here. Janice O'Driscoll. Here. Tom Meinheim. Here. David Warren. Here. Elizabeth Shaw. Here. And Matilda Rand. Not here yet. OK. Thank you. Um, we are meeting via Zoom, oral communications. Any person may address the board during its oral communications period. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. Any oral communications from the audience or the board? Seeing none, I'll move along to consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent and regular agendas, nothing. Okay, let's move on to the consent agenda. Um, we have three items to move, approve the meeting agenda, approve the board meeting minutes of January 23, whoops, 2022, that should be 2023, um, and accept the January 2023 financial reports. Any discussion questions? I'll note for the record, the date correction there, uh, Matreya. Yes, thank you, Chair Lanier. I had uh, one question on the financials. Maybe somebody on the Finance Committee can answer. Item 6350, interest expense for EIDL. So are we paying, we're paying interest on the, that was one of the COVID programs, the EIDL loan? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's a little bit of a complicated explanation. Uh, we talked about it in the Finance Committee. And based on the information that Becca gave us and the amount of work it was taking uh, Mel Sweet to keep track of the loan, and it didn't look like we needed it, we went ahead and uh, suggested that we just paid the thing back. And I'll let Becca explain what the interest is. But basically, the administration of it was more trouble than it was worth. I mean, you were chair when we did it it was a wonderful tool we had in case of an emergency but the emergencies passed and the amount of work was that so uh becca went ahead and repaid it uh we should have probably come to the board but there was a miscommunications and it's paid back and it's done so all your work paid off it just paid off but the interest rate you we want to mention what the interest is becca i think the interest is point three. But it was well, the, but, the, uh, the amount in the item he talked about. We talked about that at the uh, finance committee meeting. I'm not sh sure what you're asking. Well, there was a, an amount of money to pay the interest. This is on 6350 oh. interest expense. $648 which, in yeah, December and January. Yeah. I don't have that in front of me. Yes, that was the interest. And that, and we didn't, as Joe said, we didn't really need it. And um, okay. it was really a difficult portal for Mel. For It took us a couple of months. Be, they kept asking us to pay, but we couldn't because they said they didn't know us, but wanted us to pay our bill. And we could not get them to get us into their thing. And it took, and every time she tries to pay, it's a pill. So it's, it was, we saved $600 a month by just paying it off. So, so that's, so I guess the main question I have is that that won't be a recurring expense. It's, Correct. it's done, it's over and done. And Okay. It's actually a charge back. I mean, we had budgeted for it and we don't have to pay it. So um, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Oh, it's a credit. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh yeah. I guess that's why it's in parentheses. Yeah. Yeah. Got so it. we, yeah, it's, it's moot. It won't, it won't appear anymore because we're, we're just not using it. 
Okay. All right. That's good to know. I was just curious about that. Yeah. I'm not, not particularly worried. Yeah. I mean, we could have probably arbitraged it, but I have a feeling somewhere <laughs> down the line with interest rates rising, the federal government will say, are you arbitraging our money? <clears throat> and if so, we want some of it back. It, it just, uh, you know, the amount of money was wonderful. It was a good security blanket, but we don't need it. Okay, great. Thank you. That's, those are the only questions I had. Any other um, questions, comments on the consent agenda, the agenda, the meeting minutes, or financial reports? I will note for the record, Matilda Rand has joined us. Director Rand. Oh, well, there she is. Great. And, sorry. No I worries. This process, so I won't say where I'm late. That's fine. We're underway. Okay, let's move on to the regular agenda. Well, don't we need to take action? Motion. Oh, yeah, sorry I'll, I'll move. That. I'll move the consent agenda. Great. Do we second. have a second? So we have a motion by Director Maziarz and a second by Director Hall. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passed unanimously. Thank you. Um, move on to regular agenda. Um, We'll have the executive director's report. Oh. Becca, the floor is yours. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right. This is my report for January. Um, in the category of revenue, uh, the co working center exceeded its revenue goal of $8,800 and earned 50, uh, sorry, wish I had earned 50,000. It earned 10,354. <laughs> and that's double last January. Last January, we made 4,900. So that's a good thing. Um, it's, uh, and overall, uh, we're $5,000 ahead right now of what we're projected, our projected revenue goal. So we're happy about that. Uh, production services, which is led by uh, Victor Herman, has also exceeded its goal already and has another project coming in May. So we're happy about all those things. Um, we did 12 government meetings in January and the artist of the year is coming up in May. In under uh, facilities, we're still working on our rebuild. The Comcast finished the installation of dark fiber to CTV's building. And the next step is to get a connection between our building and the county. And there was some confusion that they, the Comcast people thought 701 Ocean Street was our building and oh, that they could have access at any time. <laughs> and of course, it is not. So uh, we had they had to step back and get okie dokie to get in there. They need to look at something and see if they can see light coming from the other end. So um, that's in process. Um, uh, we have uh, we were working on transitioning our satellite lease to Santa Cruz County, and uh, the county used to hold our lease when we were at Pacific Avenue. We took it, or satellite took it on when we moved to. So Kel, but we'd like the county to take it back again. And uh, last <laughs> month we talked about this and I reported that the county expected to have a lease ready for us for this for our building and including the additional suite of offices that we'd like to acquire by February. But um, the storms were so bad that they really distracted them. They had other things, um, rightly so, they had things that they needed to take care of first. So our, uh, our, our lease did not take precedent and so it has not been completed. And because of that, um, the people who currently hold the lease for that suite of offices, the smaller lease, um, Barbara is fine with, with staying on, keeping the lease until the county is ready. But Eliason, the company that has the rest of the building, required us to finish in February. And um, and Tom worked really hard with them and our attorney and their attorney to like extend that to March 1st. So um, uh, that is, uh, that was as far as we could get. Uh, that's all the info, all the, all the extra room we could get from them to sign. So um, I really like to um, recognize Tom for sharing his expertise and time with CTV. At the drop of a hat, he jumped in to make this happen. It just was, we had only a few days to do it and he really, <laughs> He pushed hey. a lot of lawyers around. And hey. Yeah, that's always good. Hey, yeah, always yeah, fun yeah, to do. Like Push on those lawyers. Back, back, I appreciate it. Oh, under equipment, um, we we delivered uh, 
uh, all the equipment that Watsonville High School wanted, and they were very excited. All of the students came <laughs> to collect the gear, and uh, it was like each one of them had a piece to carry out. And um, they were very excited. And uh, the students will be covering Santa Cruz County High School sports, but also local events at the Mellow Center. Apparently, the Mellow Center brings them in to cover all kinds of things, which is great. great. And those great. things that we can broadcast that aren't copyrighted, like musical performances or something, we get. And because these um, students have been working with the teacher using our equipment <laughs> to do things, one of them got a part time job there as the audio guy. Yeah. So that's what we that's what we, oh my dog has just come home and he's saying hi <laughs> um, uh, that is that's what that's it that's what we want so i'm really happy watsonville does it again they they put together they uh, they they had such a great time last time they did everything we asked they made programming kids were excited and this time they've even got a, a, a one of the students a job which is that's the ultimate goal. We can put people in a pipeline to find out if this is the thing for them and if this is a career path and get them on the bottom rung of the ladder. We can't do better. I feel our work is done. So, um, and then under outreach, uh, we gave 25 more podcaster kits to the COE and they are uh, creating content for CTV with them. And they are going to do a special thing. They're going to the STEAM Expo and they are going to um, promote the podcaster kits to all the teachers in the county. So they're going to get flyers about the program and how the, how they can be a part of it. So that's a great thing. We really want to get more 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 teachers involved. So and um, that is it for the month of January. Great. Any uh, comments, reactions, discussion? Anyone? Great. Well, thank you, Becca. We will be talking about Elias and, and subleases uh, next. Next, um, I would like to adjourn the regular meeting um, and stop the recording and move into a closed session to discuss and provide direction to our negotiators regarding payment terms for a sublease of real property located at 325 SoCal Avenue, Suite 110, Santa Cruz. So shall I pause now or? Yeah, you can pause. pause. Okay. What? All right, we are returning to oh, our uh, regular meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz okay. County for February the 27th, uh, 2023. Um, in that closed session, the board uh, voted unanimously with one abstention uh, director Shaw to direct uh, the executive director and the chair to sign a sublease with um, Eliason Enterprises, I guess it is called, um, on real property at 325 Soquel Avenue, the Eliason Group Limited Liability Corporation uh, on real property located at 325 Soquel Avenue, Suite 110. Can I correct one minor thing? Yes, please. Uh, Elizabeth uh, did not abstain. She unfortunately dropped off the meeting, so she was absent for the vote. Okay, she's absent for the vote. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you all. Um, I think this will be great. This consolidates the space, um, gives us more inventory um, at a time when the market is is growing. So, cool. Let's move on to, um, this is kind of a technical item, uh, number nine, approve mid-year budget adjustments. We had this on our agenda last week or last month, we talked about it, but it wasn't listed as an action item. We really need to um, take action on it. So it, this Move is- approval. <laughs> clean up, thank you. I have a motion. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approved. And so ordered. We close that lease. Um, and then just um, technically, just for a moment to digress, Tom, um, we'll now get uh, a DocuSign from. Yes, uh, I will. I will let them know as um, soon as we close the meeting. OK, I assume that will get circulated tomorrow morning and Great. we should all you guys should. Um, 
sign it tomorrow morning so that we meet the end of February deadline or March. 5th. Okay, great, perfect. Okay, item number 10, um, it has come to our attention that uh, the, um, I don't know what you call it, the, the <laughs> what would you the say? The pandemic exception to the Brown Act. Exception, that's the, the word. <laughs> exception to open meetings um, is coming to an end. And um, so we will need to, beginning in March, um, hold our meetings in public, uh, presume at the studios if we've done before. Um, Becca, do you want, we've looked into this some. Becca, you can explain. I think there are some exceptions where folks can attend uh, once or twice um, by, um, by Zoom and we will have it on Zoom as well. However, um, the issue of a quorum will be uh, probably our biggest challenge. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, yeah. uh, Chair yeah. Lanyai, just uh, if I could ask uh, Director Gudger, can you, if, yeah, the typing is actually pretty loud <laughs> when you're typing. If you don't mind, <laughs> you don't mind muting yourself when you're typing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, uh, yeah, you can, they're really strict about this. You can only, um, not appear in person a couple of times and that you need a really good reason you have to you can't just be on vacation or something you have to be ill and they, they've made it um, pretty difficult not to attend the meeting in person and um so it's going to be hard to uh to avoid it uh it is hard we can we do the meeting um well i guess we can yeah, we can do a we can do a Zoom version of it so that you guys uh, anybody who can't make it can do by Zoom. Uh, we probably have to have in order to do that, we'd have to bring in one of our own CPV operators who would know how to do that, how to run the studio meeting and uh, and put it on Zoom as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's extra time for uh, you know we've got to pay someone to come in and do our meeting basically, which is okay. But um, the, it's really hard to do a hybrid meeting. Like we're okay. just running it. We, the only way we do them is in the county where Victor and Matreya have worked really hard to <laughs> make all the correct connections. So there's no feedback and people see what they're supposed to see. And it's really hard to do a hybrid meeting. So it's not optimal. We're, we're now looking at for one of the, um, I'm sorry, my dog is just very anxious and he's pacing around my chair. <laughs> So you'll see his tail go by. Um, it, we, and we're looking for like SLVWD. They meet in a small room in their own office now because they're going back and they can't uh, can't really. But they're trying to figure out a way to get the public in that room. And we just had a big, long talk about how we could do it because we only send a single camera and they don't have a TriCaster or anything like that. So we're thinking of using a Polycom phone and routing audio out of it into the camera. Um, some of them have an RCA out, so we might be able to do that. But then there's feedback of the small room, the people, you know, listening to the people at home. So we haven't we haven't yet found a smooth, easy way to do a hybrid meeting, even in our own place. Um, the reason why I brought up the hybrid meeting is there may be some directors who don't want to are just not comfortable attending yeah. a, a public meeting at this point, but Certainly. yet would like to listen in or participate in some way. And how do we want to figure out a way to accommodate that? They may not be officially attending the meeting, but they could still uh, participate as a member of the public and, and listen in. I think we can we can do it a couple of ways, I think. I mean, technically, and I'll let you go, Joe, is just to like do it in the studio and we have it all set up in the control room to do Zoom meetings. So we can okay. right in there. Um, the other way is to use have them call in and to uh, to uh, it could be a Zoom call. You can be on Zoom and call in and just listen and then um, okay. raise your hand. But then we need someone to run Zoom for us during that time. So we have to figure, we'll have to do a couple of tests, but we well, also to accommodate some um, directors who may not be able to just physically be able to get in because of schedule or something. I, I want to be able to have it somehow so that folks can participate and also the public, if they want, you know, could could participate by call or or um, 
I mean, we haven't had anybody yet, but we'd like to at least have that be possible, I think. Okay, I need to, I'll, I I can talk to Victor about how we might do that. We can't do it with volunteers because it's way too tricky. Okay. So we'd have to train them. Sorry. All right. Well, I don't want to create unnecessary problems, but if we if we can do figure something out, we'll work on it. Joe, I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, I, I want to echo what you're saying. And we've had real trouble over the years getting somebody from South County. And I think with the traffic back and everything, it's going to be almost impossible if we don't have some kind of, and also during the winter, who knows if Highway 9 will work. So, I mean, I think for a variety of reasons, it would be good to have some option uh, that, and I know Tom and I talked about what the state law says. I have a sneaking hunch in a year or so, they're going to probably loosen that a little bit for small groups, just simply because people have gotten used to a different way of meeting right. and they're trying to go back. But just the logistics in this county of getting around is, is makes the option a good idea. Any other um, observations? Um, I, I do think just um, something we could look at that might, might actually be easier than trying to figure out a way to Zoom in terms of having a South County representative is if the South County representative had a place that they were comfortable where that could be posted as a meeting location they can participate if that is noticed so it just yeah. it's a little more noticing um so that's It'd something be, to think about and they can participate just you know piping in a phone call or I would so so there are ways where they can actually officially participate it's just that that location, that second location needs to be noticed. A satellite location, as it were. Well, yeah. And, and doesn't it need to be open to the public for public comment? Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it needs, you know, do, doing it out of out of somebody's home doesn't work. But right. if there was an office or something in South County, just well, there's, that, there's that community room that's used for a lot of things well, we i was thinking about the library what about the library the library which is in the same building that they have they must have a room there right <laughs> which okay. library are you talking about watson Watsonville. oh yeah you you just have to be you know you just have to post the notice 72 hours the same as any, right. anywhere else in the brown act do, do, i'm trying to remember does the notice has to be posted there right Correct. Yes, it has to be posted there because um, we we've had Brown yeah. Act meetings where people were in hotel conference rooms, but the right. notice still has to be posted right on the door of the room. Okay, can you post it on the door of the library, like the front door, so people would know it's in here somewhere, and put the name of the room on it? What we did is both, both there both and in the room. Yeah. Yeah, so they can yeah. know where to go, and then once they get in, they know they're in the right place. And then, yeah, and in the agenda, of course. Right, it'd be on the agenda as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, just heads up that that's that will be happening in March, and we'll figure out how we'll do that. Gosh, we're going to see all each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, so. I noticed, uh, I tuned into, I hadn't watched the city council meeting in quite a while, and they're doing something really interesting. It seems like they're all in person and they're all on Zoom. Like, so I don't know if they all have an iPad. It, it was the most bizarre thing. Like, like all these people are in the same chambers, but each one has their own camera and all the cameras are on all the time. <laughs> so it's no more like, you know, community TV used to have the policy where you only show the person speaking, but, you know, they have to look attentive, uh, you know, the, the, the whole meeting. <laughs> it seems like really uh, horrible. But, totally. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We, could we all be at at community TV and in in different cubicles? You know, <laughs> technically we could. <laughs> it's With the same location, right? Laptop. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, Actually, yeah, we could all be in different rooms with the laptops. And I, mean, I don't, I don't mind being in the same room. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But in case, if anybody else was, I'd be happy to accommodate. Right? Well, I guess we'd all have to be. But if somebody wants to comment to the board, the board would have to be in a room together, right? If someone yeah, wants, to or there right. need to be a spot. Well, for we have someone. to be in a room together, really. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's crazy making to drive in rush hour traffic to get there to be in an individual <sighs> Zoom meeting. I. I'm crazy right. enough. I think <laughs> that might be too much. <laughs> so I guess we could 
have more talks about this later, but I'm just wondering if a, if a phone wouldn't work. Could people, oh no, because you can't go to their house and they can't post where they are. Okay, I got it, I got it. In terms of um, feeling comfortable being in a room together, it may be that we wanna get in the habit of taking a test that day, that morning. I mean, you know. Or wearing you know, masks. Or wearing masks. You could, yeah. <clears throat> I don't mind okay. taking tests because they pay for them with Medicare, but I don't think all of you have Medicare. <laughs> or maybe, well, my is one of us that isn't on Medicare, they give us eight a month. Oh, nice. Maybe I'll share with you one of ours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, this, we will, con we will work on a way to accommodate ourselves, but I just want you all to know. Becca, yeah. I just had a thought. If we're meeting in the studio and there was someone who didn't want to be in a group, couldn't they just be in, in their own office? Like if there were a couple well, of people or like- I was wondering, yeah. And yeah. that the board would, there would be a board for someone to comment to if there, if there was someone who wanted to make a public content and then people who are vulnerable or, or just feel nervous about being in a group would be in their own room. So basically, okay, what you want to do then is have a person in the room and have a camera just on them. They'll be really attentive then. <laughs> well, I, it seems to me, I, I hate to say this, but it seems to me what what's come out about, you know, eliminating this, you know, there's having being in a separate room is like being in a Zoom meeting. Right. Even right. though that's, that's what we can't do. We need to be in it. We need to be. Oh, okay. So we can't be in separate rooms inside a building. We all have to be in the no, same, the same I address. I mean, it's the I same address. I think a certain number of people have to be but we need a quorum. A quorum in the yeah. same room. Okay. Okay. And we could have a situation where someone, you know, participates, but not is not officially counted as present, um, but participates, you know, almost as a member of the public, but, you know, listens in, comments. Um, wouldn't be able to vote or make motions, but, but you know that may be where we end up. But we are faced with the need to have a quorum to hold a meeting, right? Right. Which I think we'll be able to do. But you know, it, as schedules change, it may that could be an issue. Mm. Okay, well, well, I'll talk to Victor. We'll see what we can work out at the station with the Zoom, with a hybrid meeting. I know we don't have what, what it takes to do it right. Because mm -hmm. uh, we would have done it for people in our place, but we don't right. have it. Well, there, you, may there, end up, you may end up being asked by other groups that go through this same discussion. I, yeah. I think so. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to give up their own component. Yeah, this is sort of a, um, a moving target, too. And I think, Joe, I think you're probably right that in time, it, there may be some relaxation of this. But I don't know. You know, this, the Brown Act is is pretty serious and is taken seriously and should be for good reason because it can be abused. Well, let's any other comments? Let's wrap this discussion. We're um, closing in on an hour here. We, are we ready to move on? OK, thank you all. Um, let's see, item number 10, um, discuss and accept education committee report. Who would like to speak to that? David, do you wanna take that on? Sure, um, <clears throat> just to piggyback on what you were talking about, Keith and I uh, met uh, last week to discuss a, a range of possibilities, but one of them was to um, equip a, one of the conference rooms to be a hybrid room that might have attraction to satellite um, uh, users uh, for uh, hybrid meetings and, um, and conferencing with others at, at distance and uh, with a small group in the conference room. And I think that there's a, a number of possibilities for, for that. Uh, uh, we just like to bring it to the forefront and explore those possibilities. Uh, <clears throat> Even the even maybe the possibility of uh, with larger monitors on a couple walls that it could simulate uh, you know some of the high tech news conference new, newsrooms that youth might enjoy using at some point. Um, other 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 news is that um, Keith has been working with a volunteer to, uh, if I understand this correctly, Keith, and please correct me 
is to um, make training videos for rental equipment. You're muted. Me and my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a volunteer who has created uh, four blog posts with me about key equipment that we have for rent. And the videos in there are curated videos. They're videos that other professionals have made about how to use the equipment. We're not uh, reinventing the wheel. And it's in the post along with details about the, you know, what the equipment is, what's in the kit, and of course, click this link to rent it. So uh, we've, we've gotten four done. Becca gave us a list of nine, I believe. She's working on a couple more. And I don't know if you saw your email, David. This volunteer is interested in possibly joining the education committee. So uh, yes, I saw that, and that's wonderful. That's we great. we need more blood on our committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a poor phrase. Yeah, really. um, <laughs> and um, Keith is going to educate me on the TriCaster and what what that might be used for. Um, and in relation to what we've been talking about. And um, we're also exploring the possibility of a um, First Friday event uh, at the center involving um, generative art or other uses for uh, AI that is really it kind of exploding now with chat GPT and so forth and creating quite a stir in, in uh, education communities all around the world, as well as up and down uh, the scope of uh, companies and, and so on. And that um, it would be wonderful at a at, at certain point, either in our meetings or more informally for us as a, as a board of directors to discuss the imp implications for community TV as, as any nonprofit might want to do. So just throwing that out there. Um, and um, there have been some discussions with Jason, Jason at the county office regarding uh, community TV providing drones for uh, an education program that they might want to start. And um, I agreed that I would be contacting a local company if they were interested in finding out also a drone company and who they hire and, and what's the training involved and so forth. But it hasn't gone very far and I will pursue it only to the extent that there's interest in me doing it. Um, right. Keith, do you have anything else to offer? So uh, the, one other action item I had from the previous meeting is to create a training video for the RSVP. That's right. Uh, I've, did a, I've did a first pass. I've gotten some feedback. It's going to require a fair amount of editing. And this Friday, I'm going to have David, as a new user, walk through it and see what he finds uh, needs to be changed to make it uh, work for people who haven't used it before. Cool. All right, guinea pig. Sorry. Peter. So no hints. He has to work on his own. You yeah. have to leave him alone in there. <laughs> so David, I hope you get more training than I did. Keith just threw me in and said it's easy and push this button and that button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got to do more than that for me. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other comments, discussion there? Um, David, I have one off topic question is when you move around in your room, it looks like the camera follows you. Is that true? Is it, do you have a sort of a remote thing? Oh, I wish I could tell you I had a fancy system. I, I just bought a new iPad and it just does it, you know, oh. <laughs> I kind of want to make you see sick, you know, okay. <laughs> I thought it was cool that it just has a, a laser or a, a scan, something that follows you. I'm not quite sure how it works, but, <clears throat> uh, nice. I kind, I kind of enjoy it. It's, yeah. Uh, um, well, that was my board chair report right there. I have nothing else to um, add. Thank you for the education committee report. Any um, requests for specific items on our next meeting agenda? Joe. 
I'd leave this up to Keith, you and uh, Becca, but maybe in the finance committee, we'll start out and then bring up the low power TV. I saw a meeting that Becca wanted to talk about and I didn't want to bring it up for this meeting because that lease was too important to get spread out into other things. And it didn't look like there was anything really imminent with low power TV, but I thought it'd be good to follow up on it. That's a good idea. We could have a discussion item at least, and maybe there'll be news by then. But yeah, it's a good idea. I'll make a note of that. Um, announce any announcements. I just want to say we're having another animation class on March 19th, uh, the one day class. We're going to try it and see how that works. Great. And um, Matilda, you're up. Sure. My job is to, I move to adjourn. <laughs> and we have a, a motion second. and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye, -bye. Bye, everyone. And Bye. we will let you know uh, the logistics details and logistics of our next meeting, which is probably March 27th as well. I think it follows um, exactly February. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.